Hello and welcome to Forestville United Methodist Church. I'm Sybil Perrell, the pastor here in at Olivet Church in Lylesville, North Carolina. Today is the third Sunday after Easter, and we're still talking about Easter Sunday. There's just a lot that, to take in in all of that. So I hope you'll stay with me as we look at what else happened on that first resurrection day. I'd like to open our time together of worship with prayer. Would you pray with me? Holy and gracious Savior, we still have so much to learn about you and your ways. Guide us today, showing us how to live without doubts and fears controlling us. In your name we ask it. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b through 48. Please give me your ears as I read from the Common English Bible today and look at the doubts and fears of the disciples and how that might impact us even today. Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Transitions. They are hard on everyone involved with them. The disciples were in transition even though they didn't know it yet. Still, they had been given some hints of what should have been coming, and they should have known. Luke tells us at the beginning of the chapter that Mary Magdalene and the other women had come back from the tomb and told the gathered disciples that morning that they had seen angels who told them that Jesus was risen. But the disciples didn't believe them. They were just women with idle ideas and some hysteria, probably. But just before today's scripture, just before sundown, two men returned from Emmaus saying that they had walked and talked with a man who turned out to be Jesus and how they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. Then their transition becomes complete because our scripture today begins with Jesus standing in the room with them. But they weren't so delighted to see them. They were actually scared to death, thinking he was a ghost come back to haunt them because they had deserted him. Jesus shows them his hands and his feet, but they're still not really convinced it's him. He has to finally eat something in front of them before they believe that he's real. And Jesus helps them to understand the transition that they are now in, that his part of the ministry is over, but theirs is just beginning. Now they are to go and do and tell and keep the momentum going. They are to transition from fishermen and tax collectors and sinners to evangelists and preachers who will change the world. We go through many transitions in our lives. We were babies who transitioned into children. We went to school, another transition. 
Then we get out of school and have to find a job. Another transition. We get married. We have children. They go to school and move away. We get older. All these are transactions, major changes in our lives. Some are welcome. Some not so much so. And each time there's a transition, we have doubts and fears. Babies doubt that they can walk. Parents doubt that they will ever be potty trained. Parents are fearful of SIDS and measles and accidents. Then the kid learns to drive. And everyone has doubts about their skill and is fearful about being on the road with them. And that's the easy transitions. Sometimes there are trans transitions where our doubts and fears bring us to an absolute standstill, kind of like the disciples in that upper room imprisoned there behind the closed and locked doors. We become empty nesters. We retire. A spouse dies. These transitions stop us in our tracks. Our doubts and fears take over. And all these transitions happen outside of ourselves, outside of our spiritual self. Those transitions are even harder sometimes. You know how it goes. We decide to get baptized, maybe just because it's the thing to do, or, or we're swept up in the moment because the preacher hits us hard with our faults and we see we need to change. And we join a church. Maybe because it's the church we grew up in or because this is where our friends go to church. But there's still, that's still really outside of our spiritual self, or it can be. Eventually, though, God begins to send us signals. Signals that there's more to it than having your name on the roll. You have this feeling you should be doing something, and the doubts and fears begin. Isn't there something more? Shouldn't I feel differently than I do? What is God going to ask me to do? What if it's hard? What if I have to change jobs, sell all my stuff, and move to some foreign place and be a missionary? And so in the midst of transition of being a Christian in name only to a true follower of God, we are stopped in our tracks by all our doubts and fears. And like the disciples, we hide and think we can stay hidden. But we have to remember, Jesus walked through locked doors. Jesus can get to us even when we try to hide. And Jesus continues to quietly push us each day to do what he asks, to make the transition from a groupie to being part of the band. Jesus tells us, Peace. It won't be so bad. I'll be with you all the way through. But we still have doubts. How's he going to be with us? He's not physically here. How do I know I'm hearing him right, that it's not just my ego talking? How can I be sure it's him? I can't have him eat a piece of fish like the disciples did. How do I know for sure this is the plan? And finally, at some point, we actually acknowledge our doubts and fears to God. How do I know I'm getting this right? And God answers. God still gives us signs. You'll be in conversation with someone, and they'll say something about how good you'd be at something, and it's the very thing you feel God is leading you into. Or something that I've done in the past is continue to move toward whatever it is that I think God wants me to do and just tell him, if this is your plan, if this is what you want me to do, it will work out to where I can do it. If not, I was wrong and it wasn't from you and I'll keep searching. Every time I've done that, it has worked out for the best and then I knew this really was God's plan for me. General Conference begins a couple of weeks from now in Charlotte. It's a time of transition. 
for our denomination. But we aren't hiding away. We're keeping up with the petitions that are being brought forward and we're praying for our delegates that they will make decisions that are right for the church, the decisions that God would have them make. For you see, they're in transition too, right now. They're in limbo, really, studying the petitions and waiting for the conference to begin. They aren't hiding. They're working hard to understand and to pray to God for help in making these decisions. We at Forestville and Olivet are in a state of transition in our churches as well. I'm leaving at the end of June and a new minister will be coming. There are things to be done before that happens and things to continue to work on. Just because we're in transition doesn't mean we'll sit still until that change occurs. We'll keep working to be in mission. We'll keep working to care for those around us and to go and tell and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Yes, we have doubts and fears still. We don't know if general conference will change anything and if they do, whether it will impact us as individual churches and how. And that creates an unease as we wait. And we have doubts and fears as congregations in transition. Will you like your new minister? Will they be able to lead you forward through changes as they come up and, and help you lead in this community into the future? I have doubts and fears as well. Doubts as to whether I'm making the right decision to leave you all now. Fears because I'll be leaving my friends and support system here. Doubts that my new congregation will like me or be as welcoming as all of you were when I came here five years ago. But move forward, we must. We must face our doubts and fears that we're not good enough to bring the good news to others, that we're too old and too small to impact our communities, that the new minister won't be a good match. We must leave all those doubts and fears behind and move into the future encouraged and optimistic because we serve the God of all things who loves us and is with us in all that we do. We can be bold and courageous because God is on our side and will help us through this transition into a future that is brighter than the present. We will follow where Jesus leads and look to him for answers in his time and not ours. We will serve with patience, hope, and faith, knowing that we're on the right path to where God is leading us. We're to overcome our doubts and fears as the disciples did. We're to face the future with faith that our God goes with us, and we will. We are to be witnesses to the truth. We are to go and tell and change the world, beginning right here around us, just like the disciples began in Jerusalem and then went out into the world. We are followers of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and we can do anything we need to do because Jesus goes with us. Let us pray. All-knowing and gracious God, we are so thankful that even when we have doubts and are fearful, you are there with us. You show us the way we are to go. You lead us in the right direction. And we are humbled by your love and forgiveness and how you gently show us how to move forward when we're in transition. We thank you for beautiful days and all the festivities and reminders of Easter that are around us. The lilies and dogwoods blooming and the, the empty cross and the empty tomb. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who taught us how to live and showed us your love in so many different ways. We thank you that you showed us that love by being willing to die for us. And we thank you that that wasn't the end of it, but a new beginning. That through the resurrection of Jesus on Easter morning, you have given us the opportunity to also rise and spend eternity with you. We ask your presence with Melvin and Mark, Keith and Nelson, with Cassie and Cecile. You know their problems, Holy One, and we just place them in your care, knowing you will do what is best for them. 
I ask you to be with these two churches as they transition through to a new pastor. Guide them and reduce their doubts and fears so they can move forward with your plan for them. And we ask you to be with our country as we continue to see so much violence, so many shootings and stabbings throughout our country. Draw our country back to you so that there can be healing of body and spirit throughout the land. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Our hymn today is the third verse of number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <clears throat> the words are by Thomas Chisholm, and the music is by William Runyon. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessed so mind with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Our announcements this week are as follows. Bible study today at 5.30 and on Monday at 10 a.m. We'll be studying the letters of 2nd and 3rd John and Jude. Come join us at the Parsonage for our study. Next Sunday, the 21st, Bible study will be at 4 p.m. due to other meetings that day. 422 schedule is unchanged. Forestville's April mission is a love offering for Homes for Hope and the purchase of a hood for the kitchen in their latest home project. Olivet's mission for, for April is macaroni and cheese for Anson Crisis Ministry. Forceville has a luncheon today and a bridal shower following, um, and that is immediately after church. The shower is for Lucas Clark and his bride-to-be, Michaela Johnson. We'll have a joint PPRC meeting next Sunday, the 21st at 5.30 in the evening at the Parsonage. The Parsonage Committee meeting will also be next Sunday, the 21st, at 6.15, and we will do a walkthrough through the Parsonage with the PPRC. If you have comments, you can make those here on YouTube or Olivet's Facebook page. You can call or text me at 704-640-6872, or you can write us at P.O. Box 452, Lylesville, North Carolina, 28091. Our blessing today comes from the letter of Jude, verses 24 and 25, and his blessing to the congregation of believers that he wrote to. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you without blemish before the presence of his glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. God bless.